able to complete the frequency distribution table? Were you able to find the unknown values in a frequency distribution table? In this lesson vlog, what we're going to do is to compute for the range, mean deviation, standard deviation, and variance in a given set of data. Hello grade 7 students and hello to all the future researchers there. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is me again, Teacher Tin, your research teacher for today. If you are new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell for more updates in Research 1. lesson vlog, what we're going to discuss is all about the measure of variability for group and ungrouped data. Last time, in our previous discussion, in our previous module, what we discussed is all about the measure of central tendency for group and ungrouped data. So this time, let us now proceed with the measure of variability. In statistics, variability, dispersion, and spread are synonyms that denotes the width of distribution. Just as there are many or multiple measures of central tendency, there are also several measures of variability. A measure of variability is a summary statistic that represents the dispersion in a data set. How spread out are the values? While a measure of central tendency describes how typical the value is, the measure of variability describes how far away the data points tend to fall from the center. We talk about variability in the context of distribution of values. Low dispersion means that the data sets or the data scores are tend to be clustered tightly from the center, while high dispersion signifies that they tend to fall away from each other. Measure of variability refers to the spread of values about the mean. Smaller dispersion of scores arising from comparison often indicates more consistency and more reliability. The most common use of measures of variability are the range, mean or average deviation, standard deviation, and variance. In this lesson vlog, we're going to have two parts of this lesson. The first part is the measure of variability of ungrouped data, and part two will be measure of variability for group data. So today, we discuss muna natin a measure of variability for ungrouped data. So stay tuned. Let's talk about the measure of variability for ungrouped data. Let's start first with the range. So what we're going to discuss today is the measure of variability for ungrouped data, meaning to say we will focus on the individual score, so without having the frequency distribution table. When we say range, this is the simplest measure of variability. It is the difference between the largest value and the smallest value. So we have R is equal to H minus L, which stands for highest minus the lowest. And we are referring to the data that has been given to us. Okay. For example, the given grades are 97, 92, 96, 95, and 90. Following the equation for the range, highest minus lowest, so what score can you see here in this given that is considered to be the highest and the lowest? Very obvious, that is 97 and 90. So we have range is equal to 97 minus 90. And what is the answer? We have 7. So range will be 7. When we say mean deviation, the second one, the mean deviation, remember that in measure of variability, we are getting the range, the mean deviation, the variance, and the standard deviation. When we say mean deviation, okay, the, the symbol for this is MD, that stands for the mean deviation. The dispersion of the set of data about the range of this data is the average 
deviation or the mean deviation. So how do we get the mean deviation? We can use this formula. We have MD is equal to what do you call to this symbol? This is the capital sigma which stands for the summation. And when we say summation, we have to total the given data or the scores given to us. Summation of the absolute value of x minus mean divided by n. Let us define the variables in this formula. md, that is the mean deviation. x, that is the individual score. The x bar, we have the mean. And the n is the number of scores. And we have the absolute value of x minus mean. And in math, you know that when we say absolute value, it means regardless of the sign, it's either positive or negative, the answer will always be positive. So absolute value of the deviation from the mean. So later, you will understand it more. Let us have the procedure in computing the mean deviation. First, you have to find the mean for all the cases. Second, find the absolute difference between each score and the mean. And number three, find the sum of the differences and divide it by n. Okay, let us have this. Sabe, the first one is to get first the mean. Okay, given the grades 97, 92, 96, 95, 90, very obvious we are talking about the individual scores. So, we are referring to the ungrouped data. To get the mean, we already know that the, the formula to get the mean is summation of x over n. Meaning to say, we are going to get the total of these scores. So, 97 plus 92 plus 96 plus 95 plus 90 divided by Five, which is the total values of x. How many numbers are this? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The reason why we have 5 here. So if we total this scores, the answer is 470. And if we divide it by 5, the answer is 94. Meaning to say, our mean will be 94. So remember this mean because we're going to use this in the following data and the following procedure. After getting the mean, so, we're going to make a table to compute easily for the absolute value of x minus mean and the squared of x minus mean. Remember that when we say x, that is the score. So, remember the given that has been given to you. We have 97, 92, 96, 95, 90. And the mean that we get after adding all these scores, that is 94. So, we have to make a table so that it will be easier for you to distinguish the absolute value of x minus mean and the squared of x minus mean. Okay, remember, again, we're going to make a table which has four columns. Again, we have the x, the mean, the absolute value of x minus mean, and the squared of x minus mean. Again, these are the scores, and this is the mean that we computed a while ago. Okay, so x minus mean, meaning to say we are going to get the difference between this one, the x, and the mean, this one. So meaning to say the score here will be subtracted from the mean here. So 97 minus 94, and that is 3. Next, 92 minus 94. Okay, if it is not an absolute value, we can get we get the answer as negative 2 because 92 minus 94, that is negative 2. But since we are referring to the absolute value, so we will disregard the negative sign. So it will only be 2. And the 96 minus 94, that is 2. 95 minus 94, that is 1. 90 minus 94, absolute value, it will be 4. So again, if it is absolute value, we will disregard the negative sign. Okay, and then afterwards, we are going to get the summation of the absolute value of x minus mean. And that is 12. 3 plus 2 plus 2 plus 1 plus 4, that is 12. Now, how are we going to compute for the squared of x minus mean? 
Okay. The answer here will be squared by itself. Ano pag sinabi natin squared, you will multiply it by itself. So, the answer here, the squared of 3 is 9. Squared of 2, that is 4. Squared of 2, another 4. Squared of 1, that is 1. And the squared of 4, that is 16. So, same as we did here. So, we're going to have the summation of x minus mean squared. And that is 34. Again, summation, we have to total this numbers or this data. So, 9 plus 4 plus 4 plus 1 plus 16 and that is 34. So, this table is really important because we have to use this summation in the next procedure. Now, after we get the, the range, the mean deviation, so we can, uh, after the table, we can now compute for the mean deviation. So, to get the mean deviation, you have to use this formula. So, aside from, from using the old formula for the mean, which is summation of x minus n, so the next thing is, the next thing to do is to compute for the mean deviation. So, we have md is equal to summation of the absolute value of x minus mean divided by n. And we have 12 divided by n, which is 5, and we have 2.5. Four. Remember, okay, what we get here, yes, this one, summation of x minus mean, that is 12. So, that is the number that we use in this part, summation of x minus mean. Okay, and then our MD will be 2.4. Okay, now, let's proceed with the standard deviation. When we say standard deviation, this is the measure of how spread out numbers are. Kung gaano daw kalayo-layo or ka hindi sila magkakalapit. So, the symbol for standard deviation is the Greek letter sigma. So, the sigma, how to write this? It is just a circle na parang may buntot sa taas. Okay, that is a Greek letter sigma. Like the mean deviation, standard deviation differentiates sets of scores with equal averages. But the advantage of standard deviation over the mean deviation is that it has several applications in inferential statistics. Okay, the formula to get for the SD or the standard deviation is square root of summation of x minus mean squared over n which means sd is the standard deviation x is the individual score x bar that is the mean and n that is the number of scores okay how do we get this okay of course the table that we have uh, uh, made a while ago will still be used in computing for the standard deviation. So, this is the table that we have uh, a while ago. So, for the solution, of course, do not forget to write first the formula, the equation, so that it would be much easier for you to substitute all the given. Okay, summation of, okay, again, square root. So, what is what is the, uh, the data here? Summation of x minus x minus mean squared, that is 34. The reason why we have 34 here. And n, it's the number of values of x, that is 5. Remember, x, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, that is 5. So, we have to divide this first before we get the square root. So, 34 divided by 5, that is 6.8. And then, we get the square root of 6.8 using your calculator. So, you have to press square root and then 6.8 and then equals to 2.61. So, our SD is 2.61. And since the standard deviation is low, meaning to say the scores are quite uh, close to one another. Okay, but if it is higher meaning to say the scores are uh, dispersed. Ibig sabihin, sobrang kalat-kalat at magkakalayo yung scores. Pero, the lower the SD, okay, pag mas mababa yung SD, mas mag 
mas malaki yung chance na magkakadikit lang yung mga score. So, ibig sabihin, tabi-tabi lang sila. Next, let's now proceed with the variance. When we say variance, this is the average of the square differences from the mean. And it is denoted by the symbol sigma squared. So, yung standard deviation natin na sigma, lalagyan lang natin ng squared sa taas at ang ibig sabihin na nun ay variance. And the equation that we use for variance is, okay, variance is equal to summation of x minus mean squared over n. Where n is the total number of data, x is the raw score, x bar is the mean, and sigma squared, that is the variance. Variance is not only useful, but it can be computed with ease, and it can also be broken into two or more components, sums or squares, that yield useful information. So again, we will use the table that we have made for this solution, so we have to take down first the equation that is being used to get the variance. So we are going to substitute all the given since we have here summation of x minus mean squared and this is the summation of x minus mean squared which is 34. So we have to substitute it to the given. So 34 will be here and then divided by the total values of x or the total values of, yeah, x, that is for the n, and that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so we have 5 here. So, 34 divided by 5, we have 66.8. So, this will be our variance. This is the end of our lesson vlog for part 1 of measure of variability, which is under the ungrouped data. So, in our next lesson vlog, Part 2, we will talk about measure of variability of group data. So, I hope you learned something from this vlog. So, stay tuned hanggang sa next nating lesson vlog. This is me again, Teacher Tin, your research teacher for the day. If you're new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell for more updates in research. Bye!